Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over a recent project we did with Sportsnet. Now this project was for Asian Heritage Month and it was a series of interviews that was shot in a studio on a psych wall. Now I usually do these breakdowns in the studio here, but we thought it would be a much more valuable experience if we did it on set. <music> I'm never letting Jason AC again. <laughs> what was and now we are here on our set for Sportsnet. Again, this was a campaign for Asian Heritage Month. And here we have a three camera setup. Thought this was really interesting because we have our A camera set as a center wide frame. And then we have our B camera set as a normal, I would say traditional interview setup when you have it off to a 45 degree angle from your A camera. And then our really interesting camera is our C camera right now. At the moment, it's set up where we have the audio in. This was kind of com complicated in terms of getting the shots that we want, but we wanted to overlay uh, footage of what the person is actually talking about in the video. And in this case, the person is talking about their past experiences with sport and how they pass it down to generations of their family. So we wanted to overlay that footage and get that whole feeling rather than the person just talking about it but to visualize it as well and the best way to visualize something in terms of bringing back that nostalgia factor is through VHS or like archival footage so we wanted to input that not just as an overlay but actually inside the set as well. Originally our idea was to actually have it on the TV playing as the interview was going but due to the fact that the complications of this we just realized that green screen would be actually much better. And then we have this TV rolling right now and it wasn't rolling during the interviews. There's a high pitch frequency that would just complicate things in post. So what we actually had to do is remove all the objects that you see here in the frame of that camera. So it's just the audio bag and anything off the table and anything like that. Um, and then we just rolled it separately and then had the director, in this case Justin, just talk to them and have a regular conversation for about a minute. And then this just allowed us to overlay this in post and just make it easier for our lives rather than actually trying to do it live when the interview was happening. When it comes to actually shooting this project, we only had the two cameras rolling and then again, I explained that specialty shot that we had separately. But when we wanted extra shots of the actual talent talking and then having gestures with the hand, what we did is we took the camera off the tripod and did handheld movements with an easy rig. And then we had Justin just talk to them make them laugh, and then just get those natural interactions super close so you get that intimate feeling throughout the whole piece. I'm just gonna talk about the setup right now. So our A camera is the Red Komodo, and it's on a 50 millimeter lens. And then on the B camera, we have an 85 millimeter lens, this is our type. And then on the C camera, we have a 35 millimeter lens. And then a lot of the things you can see on the set is like all the sandbags and stuff with that lens. We'd rather go with a 50 so we can cut that out, but we knew we were gonna crop in in post. So this is something that we knew that we could do. And then that's why you see all the stuff in the back. For filtration, this is kind of an experiment for us. We actually went with some glimmer glass. We didn't wanna do anything that was super bloomy in terms of like an HBM or a black pro mist. Usually people use those at a quarter or one eighth. But we wanted to try glimmer glass and actually stacks uh, certain stages of these just to soften the skin and get some bloom in the highlights when it comes to what they were wearing. For lighting, we're doing something that we are leaning heavily on in the, our last few videos and our last few productions that we've been doing, and it's the classic book light. But this was an interesting book light in terms of where we had to flag off the spill and everything. So we had access to a bunch of bounce boards and then we just ended up building a giant box that would bounce all that light through the six by five fast frame. One thing that Nick noticed and pointed out on set is that there was a lot of spill going on to the bottom and that was from the bounce from the floor as well as all the spill coming from the actual bottom of the fast frame. So what we did is we just leaned up another bounce card with a black side and that was acting as a cutter and then it just cut all that light coming in. So now it's just coming from basically my knee up and it is much more pleasing. Uh, we actually originally had a bunch of Titans uh, stuck to the lighting fixtures up there and our original intention was to have a some color play into this and we just realized that it didn't look that good because it's a psych wall, and the psych wall allows you just to shoot into basically nothingness. And what that did is it just made the image super flat and not interesting. 
So to solve that, we kind of made our own floor. And simply that was done with a piece of black cloth that we got from Amazon. The dimensions on this are really weird. It's like a 20 foot by 10 foot cloth. And what we just did is fold it up and then we made a straight line on the back, which you see behind me, and then lined that up and then taped it on the floor and told basically no one to step on it during the set so it looked clean. And then we just had to pat it down in between just because it got ruffled up. This isn't too complicated. We only have two lights. Again, the book light and the hair light that I didn't mention before, but it's just a 60B with a mini dome on it and a set at a low percentage. And it's just kicking me out here and giving me a little separation between the background. Um, not super complicated. We don't have any ambient other than the light spilling in from the outdoors, but usually in a lot of these shoots, we have some sort of ambient lighting. That's usually a panel light pointing up at the ceiling or bouncing off a wall. But due to the fact that we're in a psych wall studio, and that's when our studio has basically the floor connected to the walls in a smooth manner, and also that the studio is entirely white, we just have a giant bounce that's all around us. So the light that's actually coming from the book light is spilling out and it's bouncing off these walls and it's giving us ambient tone. If all these walls behind us were black, they would act as negative fills and then it would just absorb all that light and we wouldn't have that gradient that we have across the wall. So that's why we are only using two lights. Thanks for joining us on set. If you guys have any questions related to this setup or want to see any future content where we actually do on-set breakdowns, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. So the what? Say the W word. What's what's the W word you say at the end of every shoot? Wet wet tangle. Wet. It's a wet. <laughs>